We will be demonstrating a canine male urinary catheter placement. This would be indicated if you want to get a urine sample from a dog, you can do a single pass urinary catheter. You can also leave an indwelling urinary catheter for patients that are non-ambulatory, patients who are paralyzed, patients who have severe trauma or are critically ill and you want to prevent urine scald. There are many different indications for urinary catheter placement. In this example, I'm going to be sterilely placing what I would use for an indwelling urinary catheter. In this example, I'm going to use a red rubber, although you can also use Foley catheters, which would actually be ideal because they have a balloon on the end that will help keep it more secure. My assistant, Sarah, is retracting my prepuce for me. We've already cleaned with our antiseptic. We flushed the prepuce five times and we actually cleaned the outside of the prepuce as well before placing this urinary catheter. I've got my sterile gloves, my sterile catheter, and it's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna grasp this catheter pretty close to the end of it so I have the most control. You can see if I try to grasp way back here, it's gonna be much harder to get this into the urethra. So I'm gonna grasp it close, and as long as I have gloves on, that should be okay. If this was just a single pass catheter, I might even use just regular latex gloves. So you can see the urethral opening here at the tip of the penis. I'm gonna put this catheter in, and I'm gonna gently feed it. There is a pelvic flexure to the urethra right about here, so you may encounter a little bit resistance as you go around that bend. I'm gonna continue feeding the catheter. I'm gonna look at the end of my red rubber to see when urine starts to come out, then I know I'm in the correct place. Additionally, I could measure this catheter before placement, so something like this. Um, see about how far in I would need to go in order to get to the urinary bladder. You should always stop if you start to feel too much resistance. But luckily this catheter is quite flimsy, so I don't expect to do any major damage to the urethra or to the urinary bladder with this type of catheter. So I'm feeding, feeding, it's going very easily. Sometimes I'll have to have my assistant release the prepuce in order to make it feed easier, but this one is going quite nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead now. Um, this is a model, obviously, so we're not gonna get yellow urine, but we might get some fluid here if we're in the right spot. Getting a little bit of fluid and a little bit of air from this model. I'm gonna see if I could just advance a little bit more. All right, so we're in the right spot here. And if I was going to leave this indwelling, you always wanna hook your urinary catheter up to a closed collection set. I never wanna leave an indwelling urinary catheter inside a patient for prolonged periods of time with nothing to hook it up to because this would be a great way for bacteria to enter to the urinary tract and we don't want that. So I'm gonna take my closed collection system, hook it up to my red rubber, and now the urine should start flowing into my closed collection set. And of course, I'll have to secure this catheter. Usually with a red rubber, I would take a piece of the prepuce, making sure that you grab only prepuce and not penis. I would take a bite of that with my suture and then secure a finger trap around my tube to keep this secure. You could also use tape and I could put a piece of tape here and you have to make sure that this catheter is dry. So I'd probably dry it off first with some sterile gauze, and then I'd put my piece of tape on it, and I would secure the piece of tape to the patient's prepuce.